Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa, the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Uh, today, in the next uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to basically teach you how to become a climate scientist using some great software. Um, if you just Google Earth Null School, that's N-U-L-L -L School, um, then you can bring up uh, what you see on the screen here and I'll guide you through it and uh, let you determine yourself what's happening with our planet. Okay, so this is the main screen, um, earth.nullschool.net. If you just click on Earth, that brings up the menus. First of all, what are you looking at? If you want to find out what you're looking at, just click on the Earth and it gives you the latitude and the longitude. And in this case, it's winds going 60 kilometers an hour and it gives you the direction of the winds. Um, so what you can do, you can also drag the, uh, you can drag the Earth around and you can look at different views. So this is looking at a view of the Arctic, for example and then it will refresh after a few seconds. You can, use the, the, um, you can use the roller on your mouse to zoom in and to zoom out. And when you zoom in, it increases the resolution. Um, so you can look at particular regions and continue dragging and see what is going on. Um, so th these red areas, what's happening there near Greenland, if you just click on it, you can see that the winds are higher there. Um, the, the lighter green, the winds are lower, the, uh, the, 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 this color green, yellowish green, the winds are higher. So this is how you basically navigate um, around the planet looking at any view that you want. Now how do you go and change the menu? You click on Earth, that controls everything. Now if you want to get more information on what you're measuring, you can click on About and you get this image here and you can scroll down and it tells you this is a visualization of global weather conditions forecast by supercomputers updated every three hours uh, ocean surface currents updated every five days etc you can go down and it gives you information on who's doing who created the software the data sources where everything is from uh, computer hosting information information about the pressure levels a thousand hexapascals is about a hundred meter near sea level conditions. Um, the important one is the 250 hexapascal is very important. That's where the jet streams are. You go up into the stratosphere and so on. So as you go up, the pressure decreases. Um, you can also get information on all the other parameters, like how the waves are measured, the CO2 concentrations, etc., aerosols. Okay, so the, the, all the information is on this um, page. To go back, you click on Earth again and it brings you back to the globe. Now let's go through some of the uh, menus and see what there is first of all. So it also tells you, we're looking at wind at the surface, it's telling you the date of the data, uh, the data is collected, so it's basically real time. Today is April 7th, um, it tells you 20, 20 hundred local time. Um, it's the GFS data, global forecast system data, US National Weather Service, National Center for Environmental Prediction, um, what you can do is you can go back in, uh, so, so also the control, we're looking at data now and you can go back or forwards. Um, so if we go here, um, that's the day before. See, it scrolls to a day before. And you can keep scrolling here to go back a full day. If you click on the smaller arrow, you go back an hour. Um, and you can shut the animation off which is the animation of the, sorry, you can shut it off here and, and that takes away the wind animation and you just see this image or you can bring the animation on. So the colors, the, the levels really stick out when you have the animation off. You can look at the air, ocean, chemistry and particulates and these are the heights in the atmosphere. So if we want to look at the jet streams, for example, we go to the 250 hexapascals, which is 250 millibars, and that's at about the height of the jet streams. If we just click on Earth again, it shuts the menu and you can see what's going on with the jet streams. So if we go over to um, 
If we go to North America, for example, and look at what the Jets are doing, okay, um, you can see the image of North America underneath, and you can see um, what's happening with the, the waviness of the Jets. So the Jets mostly move in a zonal fashion from west to east, and that's because of the rotation of the Earth. Um, things deflect to the right in the northern hemisphere. So air moving from the equator, moving up, deflects to the right, gets concentrated up at the these altitude at, at the altitude of about 11 kilometers on average on the Earth, and we get the jet. And you can see the jet splitting into two passages here. And this is a big trough here. This is a big ridge here. So warm, dry air goes up into the ridge here. You generally get stable air, high pressure, um, hot and you get cold air and stormy low pressure in the troughs of the jet stream. So the jet stream is like a barrier between the cold arctic air and the warmer humid air further south. So you can see that the uh, if we zoom out here and you can see uh, what the jet is doing, um, you know it's very wavy and distorted and broken up. We're right now in the shoulder season between uh, summer going into uh, between winter going into summer in the northern hemisphere. Um, the Arctic is extremely warm. Um, how do we look at the temperature? We can look at the temperature by clicking Earth. Going, to, We're in the air, looking at the surface, looking at uh, temperature here. Okay, so this is showing the temperature and you can check that. You can click on these areas. So it's very cold in these purple areas, but look at this air, warm air coming up here. So this. 6.2 degrees Celsius um, above zero going right up into the Arctic there and you can relate that to the jet stream um, if you go back to surface to wind you can see um, can't see too much going on there the jets are looping back here but you can generally relate these excursions to where the jet is. So maybe that warm air, you can see warm air being dragged up here across here. Um, this is what's happening now. It could have been dragged up there a bit earlier, which is why it's uh, particularly warm over there. Uh, so you can also tell lots, of, there's lots of other factors here. You can go up halfway through, th through the atmosphere, about 500 millibar. Um, you can look at the, uh, so you can do lots of things with the air. You can also have different views. So if we go here, um, you can see the Earth in this expanded view here. Um, so you can see the jets clearly here, pieces breaking off of the jets, and you can see how they're very fractured and broken up, which is becoming more and more uh, normal, if you like, in this in our period of abrupt climate change to a much warmer planet. There's 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 a lot of tug of war going on between warm and cold air. Um, there's also other views that you can look at, which are very strange and weird, not used very often. But just to know that they're there, different projections, for example. Um, and those are useful for looking, depending on what you're really looking at. Uh, but, there, but mostly we're just using this one here, which is very useful. Um, and, uh, you know, projection onto a 2D plane. And uh, here, you know, is the globe, which I prefer. Um, these overlays, um, wind, temperature, relative humidity. Um, if you're not sure what it is, hold the mouse on there. Instantaneous wind power density. So how much energy is there in the winds? Uh, total precipitable water, you just hover with the mouse to get the reading. Total condensable uh, water, or total cloud, sorry, total cloud water, mean sea level pressure. This is something called the misery index, which combines temperature and humidity. So if the misery index is high, obviously uh, you, don't, you, you, know, you don't want to be outside for, uh, for, for too long. Um, let's have a look at what's happening in the ocean. So if I click on the ocean here, and uh, we're looking at, uh, we look at the currents um, and we look at the sea surface temperature. This gives you the temperature of the oceans. Um, so what you can do is you can see that the, uh, the El Nino is still going on here in the Pacific. The warm water is here, but it's spreading out. This used to be all purple. You know, how do we know we can go back in time? 
um, by going here and just clicking back here to go back in time. So that's five days earlier, five days before that, five days before that. So we'll just keep going back, you know, a little bit and you can see how the uh, sea surface temperature is changing. Actually, it's much clearer if you look on sea surface temperature anomaly. This is, this is the temperature of the oceans on this particular day and time. Um, and it's the anomaly relative to what it would normally be, the long-term average. You can, you can see this area is 2.6 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Um, and if you go back, um, go back a bit more, you can see uh, that the warm water, so the El Nino was much stronger towards the beginning of the year. You can see there's a lot more yellow. It's a lot warmer as we go back and it's been weakening in strength, and it's been spreading, um, spreading, yeah, here we go. So it's very, very strong, okay? Very, so we're just going back to diff earlier dates, and we're seeing, you know, very powerful El Nino here. Um, you know, this entire area, you know, up to three and a half degrees warmer than normal. Uh, what's interesting is you can also see up here in the North Pacific, um, you can see that there's some cold water here, you know, warm water. We had a warm water blob here, which contributed to the California drought. Um, and then if we f go forward in time, you can see what's happening. And actually this warm, this cold water, which is coming out of the Bering Strait, is uh, infiltrating into the Pacific to a large extent. And it's actually coming, it's actually expanding area and uh, expanding the region that it's uh, encompassing on. Um, I'm just clicking through, we're in February 23rd. You can see, you can see this getting larger. Um, so you can do a lot of sort of, you know, ask questions and try to answer them to see what's happening over time on the earth. Okay, and then, uh, you know, and then once you find some interesting things, look at this cold, cold water here. You know, this is uh, almost three degrees cooler than normal and it's still very hot water up here along the coast and we still have this strong El Nino going on. Um, and uh, we'll just keep going here. Uh, so we're into March. Uh, remember every five days it's updated and you can see the extent of, of this. Here we go, the most recent uh, data. So we've got very cold water you know coming off coming off and we've got the very warm water from the el nino which is spreading to higher and lower latitudes as the el nino cycle uh goes to towards ending uh let's look at another region on the planet let's look at the um let, let's look at this cold uh blob in the pacific in the atlantic ocean south of greenland um and let's see how that progresses over time so this is where we are now. Um, if you try to go forward in time, uh, it says no data. So there's no data for that day. So the last date we have data for is a few days ago. Um, so we see the very warm Gulf Stream coming across here, 7.7 .7 degrees warmer than normal. There's some areas here that are 10 degrees. You can find them, expand, you could expand and find them. Um, but we also see um, this collision of the warm water from the Gulf Stream um, and we get the cold water coming from down through the Nair Strait on, on this side of Greenland. We also get cold water coming up here and we get some warm water here um, which I think is coming from rivers or I, it seems to be coming across. You can actually backtrack and see you know where it's coming from. Well let's have a look. Let's start backtracking a bit. So if I go back in time, you can see, look at this water here. There's a clash of the, look at this water here. There's a very cold segment here. It's 7.2 degrees C, cooler than normal. And over here, we've got water that's, uh, it's that, that's eight degrees warmer than normal, just about, and seven degrees. So I've actually found an area where it was 10 degrees warmer than normal. So that's a 17 degree difference there's this cold blob of water and where does that come from? Well, it's water that's come down from here and then it's being cut off by the Gulf Stream. So you can actually